Hey guys, I wanted to jump on here really quickly to show you how to make custom piping for slip covers. So I'm getting ready to make a slip cover for the new wing back chair I got last weekend. And I showed you last week how I made the drop cloth white with the bleach. And now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make piping, which will be the next step. So first things first, in case you're completely new to slip covering, I'm gonna show you what piping even is. Now, you're gonna have to pardon my chair because I haven't made, or I'm sorry, I haven't washed the slip cover since making the slip cover. So, it's needing it. So, try not to pay too close attention to that. Just learn what piping is here. Okay, so here's my chair. This detail, this cording you see, all the way around on the arms, on the wings, uh, around the cushion, that's piping. I'm gonna grab this and show you what size I use. So I use this, um, it's six over 32 inch uh, piping. I've used a larger size and I just never like the way that it turns out. I don't think it turns out very nice. So for this chair, I'm going to use this which I link it in my post on slip covering, which I will link in the description on this. And then I'm going to use the same bleach drop cloth, I have a little bit left over from my last project, to actually make the piping. So this sounds complicated, piping, and I have to admit I was intimidated by it at first, but it isn't, it's not complicated. So that's, it's probably the least, it is the least complicated part of slip covering a chair. So don't be scared of this part. Um, so I'm gonna cut a piece about three inches. And remember from my last post, you can rip um, drop cloth in a straight line. It just rips straight all the way down. And you're gonna have to connect several pieces because you're gonna need a lot of piping. And the way that I figure out how much piping I need for a slip cover is I kind of just take a tape measure or the piping itself and just kind of outline on the chair where all the piping goes and then I'm able to come up with a length. But for now, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of it because I know I'm gonna need a whole bunch of it. So when I get to the end of this, when sewing it, I'm gonna sew another piece to the end and then I'm gonna hide those seams when I'm actually doing my slip cover inside the piping, so it won't be visible. Okay, so a few things to note. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my presser foot off my machine. This is the current presser foot on my machine right now. The standard one you're used to using and seeing. This is pretty much the only time I switch, but I'm going to use a foot like this. And the reason is I need to get the needle as close as possible to my cording. So basically what's going to happen is I am going to sandwich this cording inside this piece of bleach drop cloth. And then I am going to put my needle all along this. So if the presser foot was in the way you, and you had to get it your needle way out here, it wouldn't be tight and pretty. It has to be close in like this so it could be tight. So that's why I'm gonna switch this foot, which isn't difficult. I will show you how to do it. And I'm gonna get up close here on my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this presser foot, the different one, underneath here. And then it's on. And then I'm going to Sandwich my six over 32 inch cording inside my three-ish inch piece. And I'm going to show you how I get my needle in good and close to make the piping tight and not floppy. You can also put piping inside um, pillows, I mean on the outside of pillows. Very pretty, adds a lovely detail. I'm just gonna sew this a bit before I come back and talk to you guys so that you can just see it. I'm gonna put my um, tension on the normal medium setting and I'm just gonna start sewing very, very closely. 
see how this foot allows my needle to just barely almost even touch the cording. It's not way over here, it's right almost on top of it. Now if you actually go on top of it, you're gonna break some needles and I have to admit, no matter how many times I try this, I still break a lot of needles. So go slow and try not to sew over your cording. It won't always break a needle, but it definitely will sometimes. And you just keep folding and going and I'm gonna do just a little bit more so I can actually show you what this is looking like. And you can know how to make custom piping. It'll make all of your projects have a much more tailored look. Whenever I first slip covered my couch in love seat four years ago, I was intimidated by piping, so I didn't do it. And it it just doesn't look professional. Whereas my wingback chair looks professionally done, and it is because of the piping. It was the same process. I just added piping in. And so, as you can see, it's not complicated to make piping, and it's really not all that complicated to sew it in to the slipcover. This is where we are so far. Basically, put a cord inside of a folded piece of fabric that I'm going to be adding to my slipcover. Now, I want my slipcover to all be the same color, but I've seen people make adorable things with um, like a coordinating colored piece of piping. So let's say you want to make a pillow that's a really neat pattern and then you want like orange piping around the outside for an extra detail. Or even in the hem of a little girl's dress, a detailed color of piping. That'd be really cute. So um, I'm doing all white for this, but adding a colored piping is a great way to add a special detail and everybody's gonna think you know it was more professionally done and it's really easy as you just saw all you have to do is fold the piece over and make sure your needle is very close to your cording which you accomplish with the foot I showed you I'm pretty sure see I don't I never I'm kind of a self-taught sewer in a way so I don't really know what this is called but I think it's called a zipper foot you don't really have to know. Just look through your feet that you own and see the one that's gonna allow your needle to get really close to your cording. That's all you gotta do. That's what I did. So, there you go. Anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to answer them. Usually I notice after I do a live video that I forgot something. So, I think I covered everything about making piping. Um, whenever I do the chair, you're gonna see how we actually add piping in. For now, this is how you make piping. Thank you so much for joining. And if you have any more questions about piping or sewing questions in general, I'd love to answer them or consider doing another live video on whatever it is that you would like to know. So definitely let me know. Thanks, you guys have a great Saturday.